Really, the aim of the project is to, to develop this new idea called welfare bricolage. Um, and it's a way of describing how people mix up a whole range of different resources to address their health concerns. What do people do when they have a problem, a health problem that they want to um, deal with? We're researching in Lisbon, Bremen, Uppsala and Birmingham and obviously four different countries. Each of those has a different welfare regime. Then within each city we chose two super diverse areas. Participation as integration or is it assimilation? One of the very interesting things about this project is the scope of the project. We have used exactly the same methods at the same time. So we build the picture from the ground up. We start by walking around neighbourhoods, getting to know them, identifying where all the activity is. We map the activity. We then meet people, we interview people about their health experiences, we find out what resources they're using, and then we go and interview the people who are providing those resources. So it gives you a really very detailed and holistic picture. So we do research in Bremen-Gröpelingen, and Bremen-Gröpelingen is the poorest part of Bremen, and Bremen is the poorest federal state of all federal states we have in Germany. And the other uh, neighbourhood we do research in is called Neustadt. This part of town is, is much more privileged, but still diverse. We need to see an acceptance on the side of the health providers and the health systems and the health policy makers that we do have super diverse societies and that our services need to be tailored to cater that diverse needs. Heterogeneity or what difference is just increasing and we cannot have one fit for all solutions. So we have to be much more on a case-to-case -case basis. The biggest challenge is actually that people are poor. That means living conditions are difficult and bad for health. People live in bad housing, people uh, have no perspective, have no place in society, people have no resources and uh, as we know from other studies these are uh, the, the very strong determinants of health. We've uh, got two neighbourhoods in Uppsala in Sweden. They have uh, a greater proportion of people born outside Europe. They have a higher unemployment rate, higher uptake of various different sorts of benefits and lower average income. Neighbourhoods that are associated with a lot of diversity have a, a kind of group stigma attached to them. So there's very little talk about racialised individuals, but people refer to problem areas, it's just hard to keep providing a level of service given that there's a high turnover of staff because people tend to leave the neighbourhoods where there's complex problems being brought through the doors every day. So it requires a kind of set of changed politics that have not been achieved as yet. In Sweden and Germany, the systems there are, if anything, less flexible than the UK and Portuguese systems. In the UK and Portugal, we see very clearly the impacts of austerity. Uh, so in Lisbon, we chose uh, Moreria and Lumiar Alta de Lisboa. Uh, Moreria is a traditional downtown, inter inner city, migrant uh, neighborhood, but at the same time, it's a neighborhood in gentrification. The, the neighborhood also has uh, a lot of older people. So it's a, it's a, it's a neighborhood that has all different kind of mix. Lumiar Alta de Lisboa is a, is a different kind of neighborhood. It's, it's not in the outskirts, but it's not um, in the inner city, so it's not downtown. It has a different kind of uh, mix. I think the most diverse people, the most vulnerable ones, are very difficult to find if you don't know where to look for them, because they are isolated. Sometimes they are in a irregular situation, so they, they are scared to talk to people, or even they don't understand the language. Through my work in the NGO and through the fact that I know the neighborhood very well, I could straight away identify who were the interesting people to interview. So I like the idea of uh, making research useful for the, the people.
that uh, are being studied or for the situations that are being studied. The staff who are in centers health, like the health center, they were not even willing to see me, you know, if I'm not speaking the Portuguese. I'm already alone here. I'm already struggling with the life. And uh, then there was nobody listening to you and there's, you have to work, you have to do everything. And then you're nowhere. You don't know if you get the residency. And the point is I can go back. My bag is good, but if I go back, I, I won't be able to come back to the Europe countries. And since I'm Muslim, I, w I don't think so. I will be able to go to uh, America or UK or anywhere, you know? There are lots of change that needs to be done in both uh, places. Because we are in a uh, society very diversified, it's very important to be open to, to, to the difference and sometimes the service available are not, um, do not offer the, the, re, the resources that are needed for this diversity. We also identified that isolation was a big problem for elderly people, for migrants. Um, these findings aren't particularly new, but that led to high levels of psychological distress, which, if untreated, often also led to, to physical um, problems as well. Because I'm not resident, they, they, they don't want to look at my face. They don't want to see. They don't want to come to know what the problem I have. It's the biggest trap for us, for all the immigrants. It's not only the one Bengali, Indian, Pakistani, even for the Brazilian, Ali, everyone. Uh, a lot of the health professionals have no, a lot of, have no previous experience in working with such diverse population. So I guess there's a lot of uh, issues around communication, how to better serve the population, identifying new needs that they were not aware of before. Uh, we looked at two neighbourhoods in Birmingham. Uh, one was uh, Hansworth and the other was Edgbaston. Hansworth we selected because it has a very long history uh, of diversity uh, and a relatively deprived area as well. Uh, whereas Edgbaston uh, is more recently diversifying. Lots of people have moved into the area uh, over the last 10 years. Um, and it's all also upwardly mobile as a neighbourhood. Uh, sort of, there is some evidence of gentrification in Edgbaston. Challenges uh, very much relate to issues around language, so the abil ability to communicate their needs uh, to particular providers. There's also issues around uh, transiency, so many people move into the area but also move on very quickly. So there's lots of movement in and out of these areas and that can be quite difficult for people to develop relationships with others and indeed with the providers who are delivering services. Even whilst the resources of the neighbourhood can be, can be, in theory, be the same to all individuals, there is this differential ability to access those types of resources that are there. And in the context of bricolage, the ability to combine and bring those resources together in different ways, clearly certain individuals have more opportunities to do that than others. The thing that really is gluing all the services together in different areas are um, third sector organisations. They help to address someone's kind of um, problems in a holistic way. So looked at the whole individual and actually tried to um, work with them to address a, a myriad of their problems. And then this was quite effective in helping them to access support for their mental health, um, to access decent food and, and so on. Hansworth Welcome started over 10 years ago as a response by churches to suddenly asylum seekers just being placed in Hansworth and a real need for help and support. And it's now become a, a weekly drop-in for asylum seekers and refugees on Fridays uh, where people can come, find support, find good food, cups of tea and uh, have a good chat and laugh and cry. In the Hansworth area there are many asylum seekers and refugees who've been placed here who haven't got a choice where they live who have just been literally dumped in a house with many people and these are people who have been torn from their country who are suffering from um, I would say mental health problems from distress who've seen terrible things that none of us would ever want to see and we need places like this where people can come and they can share what they want to share. We never ask people to divulge things. We're not the Home Office. We're here to support people. 
So one recommendation might be that you would connect NGOs, these kind of you know, voluntary organisations better, you would embed them perhaps more in state services. We are a health provider, we help people with a supportive environment, so people with mental health problems can come, people with anxiety, loss, separation, bereavement can just come and be themselves. We're a safe place where people can come, they can get support, they can get signposted to different places and that's really important as someone's uh, holistic health. Some of the social issues underpinning individuals' health concerns need to be addressed. So it's looking about finding decent quality accommodation, um, job security, enough money to feed the family, fairly obvious things that really just aren't going on in, in, in some of the countries. At the policy level, uh, it's very important the, the planning um, that is done in, in these uh, super diverse neighbourhoods. Um, and and I'm, I'm pretty much convinced that this planning can help uh, if it's done uh, you know, in a participatory way, it can be better for everyone, for health users and, and for health providers. There needs to be an understanding of the increased mobility, increased diversity of Sweden, uh, people moving in and out, and the services need to accommodate for that. So there needs to be more tailored interventions and a little bit more flexibility in the system to allow people to be able to deal with those issues. Health and also sickness is a part of life which is extremely important to everybody, exist of existential importance, and that it's not, but it's not only about health, but also about belonging, feeling accepted, or feeling discriminated. And um, uh, I think that comes out from our research very strongly. How, how many dimensions are involved in accessing health care.